You know, often we ask, why do bad things happen to good people? But you know what? That's really a wrong question. And anytime you ask a wrong question, you're going to get no answer. We should ask, what happens to good people when bad things happen to them? We're going to talk today about the art of waiting on God. Aren't you excited about that? <laughs> We're going to talk about the art of waiting patiently on God and not taking matters into your own hands and making a mess that's worse than the one you've already got. Amen? And see, when you can do that, that that's a blessed place. To be patient is a blessed thing because then nothing can rattle you no matter what. God has given us power. We have power resident inside of us. But we all want that power to be released in our lives. I mean, I hope that you want to be able to pray for the sick and see them get well. Maybe some of you don't even know that that's an option for you. But the Bible says those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know, I've already prayed that while I'm preaching the word today that people that are sick physically are going to be healed. Because I believe there's power in the word that can heal people. The Bible says in Psalms that he sends his word and heals them and delivers them from the pit and from destruction. So I can preach on anything and as long as it's the word, there's power in it to bring deliverance and healing and breakthrough to people. But you need to believe that. Is there anybody here today that needs to believe that while the word is being preached, you can be healed physically? And how about people on television? You know, don't just, don't just sit and put up with your mess, just say the word has power in it. The word is Jesus actually. And we come in his name. And when that word is preached and you take it and you receive it, there's power in it to deliver you and to set you free. But you know what? We get what we believe for. So it's a very important to me personally that I have a great deal of power flowing through my life because frankly, I want what I'm doing to bear good fruit. I want to see you get as much help as you can possibly get, and it encourages me to get back good reports of things that took place in people's lives as they were hearing the Word. So I want that enough that I'm willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to try to develop whatever virtues He says that I need to develop in my life in order to have that take place. Now, a lot of these things that we talk about, like the things that we're going to, we talked last night about blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, that's a power position. It means to be humble-minded and to not think that you're better than other people. Do you know that's a power position? When you can actually be humble-minded, not think more highly of yourself than you ought to, always treat everybody else very excellently, don't think anybody is smarter than you, prettier than you, better than you, but you're just all one in Christ. That's actually a power position. But you know what? The world would call that weakness. We have to understand as we hear these things today that they're exact opposite of what we're taught in the world. How many of you know Jesus was a little bit different than everything else that was going on in his day and age? When he came, he kind of turned things around. Actually, it was said of the disciples after Jesus left of the apostles, that these were men who literally turned the world upside down. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be a woman who turns the world upside down. I want to be somebody that God can use to do absolutely shocking things and to do things that nobody has ever done before. And you know what? You should never discount yourself when you hear somebody say things like that and say, well, yeah, that would be nice if that could happen to somebody, but it won't be me. Let me tell you something, you've got just as much opportunity as everybody else. It just depends on what you're willing to believe and how you're willing to live. It depends on what you're willing to believe and how you're willing to live. I'm a little bit weary of people thinking that all it takes to have a relationship with God is to come and pray some prescribed sinner's prayer and then just go back out and live like they've always lived. We have to be willing to live a new life for Christ and it's offered to us. We have the power to live it. But we need, to, we need to be ready to be in the world and not of the world. The first one I want to talk about today 
is going to seem really odd to you. It, it actually seemed a little bit odd to me when I first looked at it years and years ago. And it, it basically says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. How in the world can you be blessed when you're mourning? Because if you're mourning, that means that you got a problem or you're hurting somewhere or you've had a great loss in your life. I'm sure that there are people watching by TV that you're mourning right now. You've lost something. You've lost a job. You've lost someone you love. You've lost a relationship. Maybe you've had a friend that you've really cared about found out they were talking about you in an unkind way and you've lost that relationship. Maybe you've lost an item that meant a lot to you. Maybe you've had a job for a long time and had a lot of money invested in retirement there and all of a sudden the job went down the drain. There's a lot of things that we can lose in life. There's a lot of ways that we can hurt. And the Bible actually says that when we're hurting, we're blessed because we can be comforted. But today I want to talk to you about the amazing, the overwhelming amazement of God's comfort and how awesome it is to have a problem and know God and be able to receive His comfort. Just think about all the people in the world who have problems like you have or even worse and they have no comfort because they don't know where to get it. All they can do is hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt. And not only can you be comforted when you're mourning, but you have the privilege, you and I have the privilege of actually having this belief system that is backed up by the Word of God that sounds so crazy, but it's so true that I can actually believe that I have got this, this problem in my life and this pain in my life, but I am something good is going to come out of this. Now that's just downright insane. I'm hurting, but, it, but it's going to work out for my good. I'm hurting, but when I get through this, I'm going to actually be a deeper, richer, better, more powerful person than I was before I ever had the problem. Do you know I actually think that this is one of the greatest benefits and secrets of being a believer in Jesus Christ? is we don't have to have a problem and just say, well, it's all over. There's nothing I can do. What a mess. I'm at the end of everything. Let me tell you something. Having a problem is the best place in the world to begin again. You can always find a new place to begin again. What does that really mean? Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I'm really hurting, but I'm going to bounce back. Is there anybody here today that could take on that attitude? You know, I'm really hurting. I mean, I'm hurting so bad, I just feel like I can't hardly stand it. But you know what? I'm making a decision today. I am going to bounce back. I am going to come back from this. This is not going to be the end of me. Do you hear me, world? I am going to come back. I tell this every once in a while, but... It's in my heart again this morning, so here it comes. I met a woman in a Starbucks coffee shop. She recognized me from TV, and she started to tell me about what a mess her life had been. And she said, I tell you, she said, life has just thrown me under the bus. And I said, you know what? It did the same thing to me, but I decided to drive the bus. <laughs> now, you see, she didn't, she didn't understand what I'm trying to tell you today. She was going to spend the rest of her life under the bus. And she was going to tell everybody about it. And she was going to feel very sorry for herself because she was under the bus. And never once did it occur to her to crawl out from under the bus and get in the driver's seat and drive it and drive it around and pick up all kinds of other people that were hurting because they were under the bus. You know, often we ask, why do bad things happen to good people? But you know what? That's really a wrong question. And anytime you ask a wrong question, you're going to get no answer. We should ask, what happens to good people when bad things happen to them? What happens to good people when bad things happen to them? Somebody wrote a book, and I'm sorry I don't remember the author, that, that when 
When life gets tough, the tough get going. You know, you don't have to just put up with something. You can have this attitude, I'm going to bounce back. And I'll tell you something. Wh whatever I've done that's gotten me from where I started to where I am, and there's been a lot of things, the number one thing I think is I just dogmatically refuse to give up. And I tell you, wherever you're at today, whatever's going on in your life, whether you're in this room or you're watching by TV or listening to some recording, no matter what's happened to you or how many times it's happened or how hard it's been, if you will just make a decision right now, I am not going to give up. I am going to bounce back. I am going to overcome. And not only that, I am going to get something good out of this because God is not a man that he can lie. And his word says that all things work together far good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And you know, we live life forward, but we only understand it backwards. So when you're going through things, you're like, I don't understand this. This hurts so bad. You know, this is awful. This is terrible. But you know, I know you're like me. You're over here a few years down the road, and now you look back and you think, oh my gosh. Boy, that thing that I thought was so terrible when I lost it, I realize now that that relationship was separating me from God. And wow, is it a good thing that that relationship was lost in my life. I'm going to tell you a few different things today that have happened to me over the years, but let's just get a little more of this first. What happens to good people when bad things happen to them? Well, they grow spiritually. And you know what? That's one of the greatest things that can happen to us is to grow spiritually. They bounce back. They become better and not bitter. The world is so full of bitter people that are, that are sour and resentful and have a chip on their shoulder because life hasn't turned out the way that they wanted it to. You know, there may be a few people in here today or watching by TV that you've had a great, rosy, beautiful, you know, life, but most of us have had some difficulties along the way, and there's some in here that your life has been similar to a nightmare for a long time. But you know what? Don't despair in the midst of that. Make a decision that you're going to bounce back. And I'll tell you something else that I recommend. Don't even really try to figure it out. Don't start comparing yourself to other people. Why me? You know, why is their life so great and mine is not? I can't answer all those questions, and I doubt that God's going to answer them for you. He may show you a few things. Maybe, you know, through lack of knowledge, you've opened a lot of doors in your life that now you need to get right with God and get those things closed, those doors closed, and things can turn around. But a lot of times, we just don't know why things happen. And I've found out that I don't have to know why they happen. All I need to know is the one who can change them and turn them around for good. Amen? They don't count what they've lost, but they count what they've got left. Boy, it's so dangerous to just sit around and think about, well, this didn't work out and that didn't work out. How many things do you have in your life right now that are working out? How many great blessings do you have? Can you walk? Can you talk? Can you hear? Can you see? Were you able to get up and go to the bathroom this morning without having to have somebody put you in a wheelchair and roll you there? Did you have a roof over your head last night? Or are you like some of the people that I've seen right here in your own city who are getting ready to sleep out in the streets in the winter? I, I still just think that just must be absolutely unbelievably awful. And you know, even if some of them could do something about it and they won't, there's still a problem there. There's still something that they're, they're missing and we still can at least have compassion on them. We can still at least pray for them and not say, well, you know, bless God, if you want to do something about it, you could. Some people are so broken that they don't know how to do anything about what's going on in their life. People who are good people, who are good godly people, and bad things happen to them. They continue obeying God no matter what. They don't have to feel good to obey God. They do it no matter how they feel. And they experience the comfort of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. 
This today should make you feel a lot better about your troubles. You might even get excited about your problem. You never know. I didn't think you'd believe that, but. Let's start in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of sympathy, pity, and mercy, and the God who is the source of every comfort. Now, let me just stop here for a minute and say, when you're hurting, it's pretty near useless to run to people thinking that they're going to give you enough comfort to get you over it. Now, I'm not saying people can't help. It's good to get somebody to pray for you. It's good maybe to have somebody listen to you. It always feels nice when somebody says, I'm sorry, you're hurting, I understand. But even with all of that, they can't give us enough comfort to get us strong and up on our feet and moving in the right direction again. Always go to God first when you have a problem. Do not go to the phone, go to the throne. And so often we run to people that don't even know how to clean up the messes in their own life, and we're asking them what we should do about ours. And so I like this, that God is the source of all comfort. And I can tell you, there are people in here right now that you need to hear what I said, because every time you got a problem, you run to one of your friends. Have you ever gotten mad at somebody because you went to them for help and they didn't even seem to understand what was going on? Come on, have you ever got, anybody here ever gotten mad at your husband? Any lady ever gotten mad at your husband? because you tried to convey to him how you were hurting and they just like didn't get it? Well, see, I've told Dave, I don't care if you understand or not, tell me you do. It's gonna be better for our marriage if you pretend in this situation. Normally, I like you to be real, but in this, you can pretend. Just look at me very sympathetically and say, I understand. And you know, he does it now, and I know he's not telling the truth, but it still feels good. <laughs> still helps me. I think I get more comfort from my dog sometimes than I do people. How many of you know that if you got a really good dog that loves you, I mean, you can have something going on, you're going to get all the kisses and all the, you know, you can just like, <laughs> amen. So if you're the kind of person who keeps going to somebody, and you're aggravated at them all the time because they're not giving you what you want and need. How about going to God? Verse 4, who comforts, consoles, and encourages us in every trouble, every calamity, and affliction, so that we may also be able to comfort, console, and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble or distress with the comfort and the consolation and the encouragement with which we ourselves are comforted, consoled, and encouraged by God. So if I could just take this to the very edge and see if you can believe this with me. You know, I believe in my life that there are things that God could have delivered me from much more quickly than what he did, but he didn't, and it was specifically so I could bring the people that I teach the comfort that I'm able to bring them now because when I talk about going through things, I'm not just, didn't just get it out of a sermon book. I've been there, done that, know what I'm talking about, and I know that God is faithful. So if you want to be used by God, if you have dared to say, God, use me, <laughs> if you have dared to pray, God, I want you to use me, I mean, if you have dared to pray that, God, I want you to use me. Well, then guess what? You just put yourself right out there. Because you know what? If you want to work for God, you got to have some experience. It's not good enough just to say what's in a book. You got to have some experience. And the Bible says that even Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered in Hebrews 5. Now, how could somebody who was never disobedient learn obedience? What that means is he learned the price of obedience. He learned what it costs to really obey God and to be prepared. And the Bible says that he was prepared and equipped for his office as high priest through the things that he went through. 
You know what? I'm qualified to minister to you because I've been through what I need to be through to get the qualifications to stand here and know what I'm talking about. And if you want to be qualified to really help somebody else and to have any real power behind what you say, then you're going to have to trust God that no matter what you go through, He's got a purpose and a plan for you, and you will be better when you come out on the other side than you were when you went in on this side. And you know, you can all, it's very easy to clap when you've been through it and you've got your equipment. And I'm grateful for your encouragement this morning. But let me tell you something. When you're on the other side of that mess and you don't understand one thing about what's going on and you're hurting so bad you feel like your guts are falling out, it is hard, but it's at least beneficial to have somebody come along and say, look, this is probably what's happening, and if you'll just hold steady, you're going to come out on the other side, you're going to bounce back, and everything is going to be better than it could have ever been if you wouldn't have gone through that thing that you went through. Amen? Amen. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Our natural inclination would be to feel that we're not blessed when we've lost something. <laughs> However, often the things that we cling to are the very things that separate us from a deeper relationship with God. Can I tell you that God doesn't want you just to have some little surfacey, I go to church once a week relationship with Him. He doesn't want you just to put him in some little spiritual, religious compartment of your life while you run the rest of your life. He wants to invade your life and be involved in every single thing that concerns you. Amen? And sometimes God has to work with us in ways that we don't understand. Sometimes what we think is the greatest tragedy in our life turns out to be one of the greatest blessings that we could have ever possibly had. All you have to do is just think about Joseph in the Bible. I mean, man, the story starts out so bad. A little guy with a dream for his life, and he's just a happy little guy that felt like God wanted to use him, and the next thing you know, his brothers are so jealous and hate him, they throw him in a pit and tell his father he died, and then they sell him to slave traders. And then he ends up in Potiphar's house, and pretty soon he was in charge there because you know what? You really can't keep a good man down. Everywhere he went, he ended up being in charge and having favor. When God's favor is on you, it doesn't really matter where you're at, you're going to get favor. But the devil is still the devil, and so he found somebody he could work through, and Potiphar's wife wanted to have sexual relationships with him, and he would not because he was a man of God. He held firm no matter what it cost him. I said he held firm no matter what it cost him. I said he would not because he was a man of God, and he held firm no matter what it cost him. You know, as you and I developed the attitudes that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 5, we position ourselves to receive the blessings that are listed along with those attitudes. It's really interesting to study them and to see really what the fullness of the meaning blessed is. that the Word of God is true, and that He changes lives, and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Like maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer? Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. 
you know, talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and, you know, taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Uh, those gifts and joys five minutes. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have a different life today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys saved by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.